Hey, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. You still have the music playing. I feel like you don't go that long with the music playing. Here we are. I just really enjoy the music. It's good music. It is. And we got it for the free. For the... I feel like you should stop saying that. Why? Because someone's going to be like, well, let's charge you for it. No, they won't. Because I tried to. I tried to pay them for it, and they were like, nah, go ahead and use it. So I was like, cool. Hello. So what's really good? What's really good? Um, I haven't said that since like 2004. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, what's up with the what's up? No, that's that's all you and your no? people. We didn't say they're that. Not, they're not my people. We didn't say that in Massachusetts. It just, it just so happened to be someone who was living down here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, what's good? What's really good? Nothing really. Um, we're recording this on Monday. We had an eventful weekend. Um, I feel like a lot happened and not a whole lot happened and at the same time. Um, Jessica had had an event to work uh, for one of her 15 new jobs that she has. And she had said, she asked me if I would help her set up. I asked her if no, 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 the no, event. No, 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 no. My, my time. So initially she had asked me, she was like, oh, I, I was thinking you could come and help me set up. And then you could like network because it was a brunch. There'd be other businesses and small businesses there, local here in Charlotte. So I was like, cool. And I asked her, I said, do you have help? Or any of your BA is going to work? She's like, well, yeah, I think I'm going to have some volunteers. So I'm like, cool. I go, I help unload the van for a little bit. I set up the tent. I'm good. That's all I got to do. So we get there. Sure enough, we unload the vans. Me and Jess, we rolling like like back in our in our uh, back in the days when we were dating, and I was no helping crime. her with her helping her with her programs. And um, you know, we're wheeling stuff to the uh, to the space. We set the tent up. We there's a, there's an older gentleman there who who had his company. He was helping us out. Uh, there was another uh, family who had their own business. They were helping us out. So we get the tent up. We get everything set up. And I notice nobody's showing up. Like in terms of BAs for or volunteers for uh, for for Jessica's program, so I asked again. I was like, "Did you say you had volunteers?" She was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they are." I'm like, "Yo, <laughs> like either you have the- either you have volunteers or you don't. I don't. You don't need like. I'm I'm already like I'm sweating. I'm I've already worked like." an hour longer than I was expecting to work. And we were at an hour and 15 minutes. I thought I was going to do 15 minutes of work. All of this is a lie. And I was like, yo, do you or do you not have volunteers? And she was like, I guess not. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm here. I'm already sweaty. I stink. I'm already like two shades darker. Let me go ahead and see this through. And it was fun. Uh, For those of you who don't know, Jessica and I, we used to do this a lot back when she was running programs before we got married, even I think maybe even a little bit after she got married, after we got married. I did did one or two, uh, mostly when we were just dating and it was cool. It brought back memories, but I remember how hot it is when most of these events take place. Yeah, this heat was different. And, you know, heat at at 33 is real different than heat at like 26. Now imagine heat at 27 weeks pregnant. I was, I was, yeah, I was just praying. I was like, Lord, don't let me dehydrate. Don't let me faint. Don't let me have an epic migraine when this is over. So I just opened my Heineken for those of you who are listening on uh, Apple or Spotify or Google. Actually or, for anyone who's viewing or listening. Well, if you, if they're watching, they know I opened it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was fun to, to kind of, to ditch the kids and go back nearly 10 years to when it first began. And, you know, we were in these streets and we were pulling product out of cargo vans and throwing up tents and sampling people or trying to convince people to sample. It was it, it definitely was fun. I was I was proud of both of us because David was down a leg. 
Yeah, I, I have, I had, had, and and still have a bad hamstring. I tweaked it playing basketball. You know, my my comeback season is looking, setting me up for another comeback season because mm-hmm. I'm back on the shelf again for a little bit. So. So he he still yeah. he pushed through, and I kept telling him like, take it easy. And it was so funny because we both have conditions right now. Like he's got his hamstring. I obviously pregnant so i'm trying to tell him to like take it easy and i know he was just like chick you're the pregnant one like if anyone needs to take it easy it's you so um it was it was just a lot of fun and then you know after a certain point we were like i I decided one is hot and two we're just not moving as much product as i want to be moving so we ended up relocating inside uh and i think we did a lot better once we moved inside relative so, in my opinion, I think we, I think inside was a pr- the prime location for us. But fun weekend took up all of our day Saturday. I don't know that I want to be outside. I told someone I said after Saturday I don't want to be outside ever again because it was hot. It was really yeah, hot. It was, it but was, it, was um, it was good being under shade. It was still hot. I'm gonna have to buy a fan if I have another. I do have another event coming up, but I don't plan on working the whole thing. Uh, I'll have a full team by then. And uh, totally, totally. Uh, Unrelated? Well, no, totally related. Uh, I don't know how we forgot, but we the event we were working was the Charlotte Brunch Festival. Yes. Uh, hosted and hosted by, what was, where, where were we? We were, it was, it took place at Norfolk Hall. Norfolk Hall in South End, but organized by uh charlotte's number one influencer uh future guest here on yes. rush five so i'm not gonna drop around when i have i have her intro yes. like and if so we start talking about her again I, ha- I have her intro already so when she comes like i am going to probably embarrass the mess out of her because i just have the way i'm gonna bring her in is just so epic that probably better than like any like not cousin mark not just cynthia not Melissa. I'm Melissa Wilson David has a low key crush on her. No, I just got look. I have. I, I, I have. I'm convinced, and it's I okay. Have, no, she's an amazing. She's no, an I amazing don't. Woman. I have a profound appreciation for people who just go out there and they get it, and they just like, they're just always on and they're always hustling Killing. and they're always out there working toward, you know, Slaughtering their the game. their goals. So I just I'm I'm a fan. Number one. I'm just he's a fan. He's a fanboy. I, 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 yes. Let's segue because you're, I am, you're, I am a fanboy. You're getting charged up. So, uh, but when I bring her in, it's going to be so epic. But, uh, yeah, y'all might have to wait till season two, though, unfortunately. But it'll be worth the wait because she's awesome. She really but yeah, is. so we were at the, uh, Charlotte Brunch Festival, uh, inaugural? First one? Yes. Yeah. Hosted first. by her new company. So, uh, um, it was sold out. They did some pre, some pre sale. Uh, and, Sold and, out the night before. and was, was real busy. I went in the hall. Jess was like, oh, go get some food. I was like, okay. So I thought I would go in, just stroll in, get a plate, hop back out. I went in and there were lines like out the ass. Like there was just lines on top of lines. Like I walked in, I thought it was just like an, an accumulation. Yeah. A congregation <laughs> of people, you know, just talking and, you know, just, no, it was a line. Like yeah. you step in the door and you're in line, not, yeah. to, not the line to get in. Once you get past that line. There was another line, and it, it spanned. Because we were using the back door. Yeah, it spanned the length of the building. So uh, it was definitely, um, it was it was live, and there are a lot of people out there. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what happens next year. Uh, and really with any other events um, that, that she uh, decides to develop and, and put on. We might be doing a pop-up. Who? You and her? Oh, cool. Um, as long I mean, as it's, just, as long as it's. As long as it's you and her, <laughs> not not me. We and, uh, might be doing a, pop-up. a rush vibes pop up. Um, but yeah, it was. I thought. Yeah, it was, if it's not I, rush vibes pop up, I'm not going to be there. I followed up with her. Um, it, it just from what I saw, it 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 was successful. A lot of the vendors sold out before the event was even over. I mean, it was packed. Like he said, they sold the tickets sold out. I think it was 500 tickets, and then she sold an additional 100 at the door. Um, that That's number could have 600 been, for anybody who's. Can't do quick math. A little, little challenge. Um, that so, common core. You're doing that common core. It's just, it's just one, one plus five is six. There you so go. it was, it was just, it was a beautiful event, and it, it executed well, and it was just something different. That, you know, we have festivals and events in Charlotte, but you know, it, it was, I, I appreciated it. Um, I can't wait for the next one to go as a patron or as an attendee who's not pregnant. Yeah, because I ain't working um, on. 
because like they had champagne samples and I had I made David get one and I sniffed it and it smelled really good. And yeah, champagne was really good. And he's not even a champagne person, but he was no, like, mm, this is it good. Was, it was good. And I didn't even I was like I didn't want to hear that. I just wanted to it was exquisite. I just I just wanted my it's own. Fantastic. Um but yeah, it was fun and we got back into our heyday, but I remember why I stepped away from this. Why we got the game. I'm just it's a not young that man, I'm not it's a young, built. It's a young man woman and Not that game. I'm not built for it. I just don't want to be built for it. It's not my it's not my ministry anymore. It's not I've your graduated. Ministry. <sighs> speaking of uh speaking of ministries and uh speaking of bad wheels, shout out to uh my man, uh, Pastor Bobby Wilkinson, who uh, oh, I didn't know where this was has going. Uh, has was single handedly uh, gotten me back on the basketball court, and who I also share place like fifteen percent of the blame on my hamstring because if he didn't offer me a, a free place to play basketball, I wouldn't have have pulled it. But I, you know, it was it was a, it was a worthy worthy industry. I would I would do it ten times over because uh, it's great to have a community uh, of. Um, you know, just people to play to play ball with again, and and Bobby's been really, really gracious and really welcoming. Um, happens to be the husband of Bethany, who was a guest here in Rush it's Vibes, a, a regular who, honorary mention, who and now- uh, who Jessica's really close with. So uh, there's that dynamic there. But um, we have a lunch date, <clears throat> huh? Bethany and I have a lunch date. Oh, cool. Um, I had mentioned to him actually a couple, probably at this point, a couple years ago, if he ever needed an extra one to just somebody just stand in the corner and shoot, you know, hit me up. And so a couple years later, he actually took me up on it. But uh, yeah, shout out to Bob. Good people. Wilkinson's are good people. I feel like I, and I'm Bobby gonna, and Bobby Jr. I'm going to reach out to him because David has been referring to him as Bob. And I feel like the name on your Facebook is the name that you go by. And on Facebook, he's Bobby. Bethany refers to him as Bobby. He when I when I went to pass him the ball Bobby. and I said Bob, he turned his head. So that means he answers to Bob. Okay. He, he, but it's it's probably no, like no, it's it's somebody called it, like how you re- no, answer to because if he didn't answer to Bob and I passed the ball to him, it would have hit him in the back of the head because he wouldn't have he wouldn't have been used to being called Bob. No, it's just I I I'm very sensitive about nicknames. No, it ain't it ain't for I you to be sensitive like about. If somebody refers to themselves as Bobby, especially on Facebook. And when did Facebook become Because gospel? the name that you put on Facebook is typically the name you want to be uh, called. Okay. Whatever. Anyways, I call him Bob. And until he says he has a problem with calling him Bob, he's Pastor Bob. He's probably like <laughs> talking junk about you. This no, he's dude. not. He's probably this like he's probably like, why is she tripping about a name that's in my name? But like Bob is in on Bobby. On Facebook He's Bobby. Okay. In person. I call you Jess. Yes. Your name is Jessica on Facebook. Why yes. haven't you said anything? Because I'm married I have, to you. I'm married to you. It's always different when it goes against the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. Whatever. There's I re- levels I re- to re- this. I- and maybe you're oh. not on the level to refer to him maybe as Bob. Maybe you're not in our relationship. Therefore, you can't speak on it. Okay. Ooh. Right. Ooh. He's probably... Oh, he's probably in bed next to his wife that? talking about why does this How about guy that? Were you call out there? me Bob? Were you out there in 96 degree heat and 300 percent humidity playing <laughs> basketball no with us? Thing huh? Who are you? I was not. And I nah, wouldn't be. You weren't. But you know who was? Because the way me and Bob, <laughs> it doesn't even feel right. <laughs> me and Bob. It doesn't even feel me and right. Pastor Bob I'm trying to we're figure out there. out who Bob is. It was 96 is. degrees, 325 percent humidity. I'm following up with Bethany and my shoelaces were Bobby. sweating. That's how hot it was. You just gonna elevate and just you know drop to to, to Robert, just start calling him Robert. Look, if if our relationship goes, <laughs> <laughs> if it hits that next level, maybe I will. Okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna argue this with you. Yeah, I know because once again, this is mine. No, you're wrong. Mine and Pastor Bob's relationship. You're wrong. He's not. He's who's Bob. Bob is Bob. He's not Bob. Oh, I'm whatever. Sorry. Whatever. Anyways. Um, yeah. So uh, besides that, besides telling me who, I, how I should speak to people who I have relationships with, what else is going on with you? Uh, uh, we got mild makeovers. Who? That our hair did. Oh, yeah. But you can't really tell mine. But yours is, is fire. Like, and I, actually, and I actually think I'm gonna go tone down the blonde. It's uh, 
it's blonder than I wanted. I wanted more of a dusty blonde. More blonde? No. Oh. It's blonder. It's not nice when somebody tells you how to speak, is it? Uh, I'm just telling you how to say someone's uh, name. Yeah, whatever. You are not his proxy, okay? You do not speak for him. You know what? He's maybe- a grown man. Multiple years your senior. Not 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 too much. Not multiple. More oh, significant years your senior. See Bob. <laughs> not multiple, my bad, Bob. It was a bad pro war choice. Uh so do not speak for him. Anyway, uh yeah, it's blonder. I wanted a, a dustier blonde. And since the humidity is not allowing it to stay styled, so you made I'm, it that I'm humidity recognizing serious. the brightness of it. So, but yeah, um, Solid did an amazing job. Shout out to the real Solid J. Red in the back, the peekaboo red that I wanted, blonde on top. There's, if you could see the before and after, the it was, before. It was, it was of, amazing. Like when we stepped out of the salon and we took our car selfie and how amazing it looked to now, it's kind of heartbreaking. So. Yeah. I guess I'm going to have to go this whole winter doing blowouts so that my hair can get used to. You better get some, you better get some, again. some buy three, get one free deals or something. Solid better hook you up. Anyway. I'm just saying. <sighs> Shout out to Solid. Yo, she massaged, she washed my head. Oh. Oh, it felt so, it felt so amazing just to have someone just caress. I was a, an insecure woman. Caress. Because all he did. And just manipulate my scalp it was it was amazing it was fantastic i almost i was sitting in the chair and i thought i was gonna float because my i my i felt my soul was so at peace i thought it was ascending it was just it was amazing um for all you men out there like bald men i get it now like when 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 your woman when she just after long days work and your woman just you know she's just rubbing caressing your head massaging a little bit I, i feel you I don't completely feel you because I'm not bald. Not yet. Yeah. Hopefully not for another 40 years. But uh, I get it. I felt it. I may just like just make appointments. Not I may not to get my hair twisted just for her to wash my hair because it, it just it was amazing. So we have uh, we have a show episode. You say that every we episode. have things. Oh, I mean, like, of course, we have a show, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. But uh it's a transition. It's one of my transition phases, uh, phrases. Hey, Dave. Thanks. Jessica. <laughs> I introduced myself as Jessica. Okay. Jess. Jesse. It's Jessica to you. Elizabeth. Liz. It's Jessica to you. E. Liz. I remember in middle school, I had a friend Biscuit. who called me. Jill Biscuit Elizabeth. head. Called you what? Jill Elizabeth. Jill Elizabeth. Uh, what's his name? It was a she. What's she. her name? Why? What's her name? I'm gonna look her up on Facebook. What's her <laughs> name? I don't understand. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, you want you want to bully my wife? Huh? You want to bully she my wife? She wasn't bullying me. She uh-huh. just combined my first name. And oh, my I thought name. I thought it was it was like shade. No. Oh, okay. Cool. I'll spare her then. You know, I don't play when it comes to the only person that can diss you is me. Anybody else try to diss you, then we're gonna have problems. <clears throat> Anyways, so we have an episode. It's episode forty, the big four zero. Rush Vibes is turning forty episodes old, and we're getting closer to the sunset of our first season. Um, you know, we've been doing this for forty, thirty eight straight weeks. It's one of the longest. No, no weeks off. It is literally one of the longest commitments. I've like ever we had. are, we are in this thing, yo. It's just so amazing. And he's, he's in this. And I got, I got was a, left with me. Y'all would be getting some reruns. <laughs> I got a message from one of my, I know we talked about this, but I want to share it with y'all for anyone who's, who's actually watching and listening. And, and, and my man, uh, who I'm about to name in case you're watching or listening to this episode, one of my old college football teammates who I haven't spoken to since 2013. Cause I saw the little Facebook messenger thing messaged me this morning. It was like, yo, I checked out a couple of your podcasts, uh, episodes. And I want to let you know that you and your wife do an amazing job. And I was like, yo, I appreciate it, Jeff. So shout out to my man, Jeff, hey, Jeff. Who, who reached out uh, out of the goodness of his own heart and uh, let us know. And, and sometimes just those small, subtle gestures, small, subtle encouragements um, that, you know, let you know that somebody is getting value out of, you know, 
what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I had a, I had a moment of, I've had passing moments where I'm like, man, maybe we shouldn't just, maybe we should just take a week off. And I don't know what's whole podcast thing. Like I'm, I'm, I'm working week. now. I'm working now. Jess is working 10 jobs. Now our girls are getting older. We're expecting. We're tired. Delta variant out here working at overtime. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, maybe we should just, you know, it was cool for 30 some episodes and maybe we should, but messages like that. It's like, you know what? Let's keep going. And people like cousin Mark, cousin Lamont, who are always listening. Um, cousin Mark, who's like secretly, I think planning a second retirement um, job, second retirement life as our, like our PR publicist which person, is fine. <laughs> which is perfectly fine. I would, um, I would like that very much. It's unfortunate he doesn't live closer. Yeah, no, right. Um, and then, uh, you know, like Melissa, who who always listens. Yes, I'm calling her Melissa. And, you know, everybody else. But I know her I'm, Facebook says Missy. But her mama calls her Melissa. Hi, but Facebook. And then I know her mama calls her Facebook Melissa because she told us. People want she told us. You to call My them. mother calls me Melissa. Yeah, because her mama named her Melissa. Exactly. So you think I'm a disrespect her mother? No. Yeah, but, I'm going to honor her. I'm going to honor her. I'm gonna honor her mother's yeah. wishes and call her Melissa. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. And uh, little brother Alan, little big brother Alan. So I, I know I'm leaving some people out. So forgive me. Obviously, you know, parents and whatever. Um, not whatever. Excuse me, parents. But obviously yeah, the parents, whatever. and uh, you know everybody else who supports it. So it's just, you know, it, it was really good. It, it, over here warm warm my heart this morning it was uh it was a perfect message to, to start the day so um yeah really enjoying what we're what we're doing here and um it doesn't feel like work it is a lot but it doesn't feel like work, work. uh last week i was up till what one two in the morning oh no sorry. cutting <laughs> cutting 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 the episode so that i'd be ready for wednesday and i i enjoyed it i straight up said i was like i'll keep you company and then we Yo, finished she read Nick quicker we than we finished the episode, and I was like on I she, was on that fourth step. <laughs> she read Nick quicker than a, a, a rookie spades player. Like I she, was, she is that fourth. That's the fourth step right here, where his arm is blocking. I was on that step, and he was like, "Oh, so you're not gonna keep me be, company?" It'd be, it'd be your own people. And I was like, I was counting on it too. I was like, I I already came up too many stairs I to was, turn back. Now. I was counting on her. That's four out of seventeen stairs. That's too let, much. She let me down. I turned around, I took my happy butt. And I didn't even ask her, right? She was like, I volunteered. She was like, oh, I'll keep you company when you, I was like, cool. Thanks, babe. After 39 weeks, you finally, you know, willing to sit with me while I edit. Maybe season two. I can, you know, we, we ended the episode. I cut the stuff off. I turned around. She was already up the steps. Like I was like, I was on the fourth. That's this stair (laughs) right here. I I just turned the, I was on fourth stair. Literally just turned the mics off. Turn and she was, she was heading up. It's, it's crazy. It'd be your own people, man. Look, I was tired. I'm I bet you, you know what? I bet I bet Beth doesn't do that to <laughs> Don't Bob. Call her Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about calling her Beth, but then yeah, I'm like, she's not. She doesn't look like a Beth. I'm like her, none of her. She's not a Beth. Nothing about her Says or her Beth. social media indicates Beth. Yeah, I think Beth is like. I don't, I don't want to say it. It's, <laughs> not, it's not her. I might flame me, but it's definitely not Beth. But there's She's probably someone who calls her Beth but, in her life. But Bob is cool. Bob is like a, you know, Bob, Bobby is, is, I, I, I am supremely confident that Bobby has absolutely no problems being called Bob. No. I, I, I just, it's well, just. Like it, it probably irks him. It probably or does. It, it could be like. Well, I'll tell you what, he'll let me know after, after this week. I'm sure he'll let me know. Um, That's how we test if, if people listen to that. So yeah. we talk about things. Well, I know Bethany listens, whether it's. You know, and that week or, or she's behind, but she sure. normally catches up. And she actually messaged me about she was catching up and she she was listening. She was in Academy Sports, I think. And she was listening to, was it last week's episode? And it was the part about um, <laughs> where I was listing the different racial thugs. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And I she swear. Was, she was mildly concerned about listening to it in public without headphones on. And you guys wonder why we don't do this live, because <laughs> I have to be able to edit out this is He's uh he's trying to preserve flagrant, outrageous stuff that my that my wife. I'm not spews. that bad. Like the, I mean, okay. If y'all don't think, y'all, go follow her segment, on Twitter. When the view comes back, no, because what's her in face fall, is gone. So I don't have. Oh yeah, that's right. I don't. I don't have. They'll my, replace. They'll replace her with some other nah, right wing. She was. She was so unique. Just so unique. And you know, I, people, people. I bet people said the same thing about Elizabeth uh, Hasselbeck 
and then they replaced it with with Megan McCain. So it's no, always Elizabeth some. Elizabeth Hasselbeck was like in two thousand one. But I'm saying people couldn't stand her, and they thought that when she left, oh, you know, oh, thank God she's gone. There won't be won't have to worry about it. And then and enter Megan or John McCain's daughter. Because <laughs> you know her dad was John McCain. Yeah, really? Yeah, I don't know. If I didn't that. know that. I knew he her was, mother was Cindy McCain. But um, we have a show. We do, and we have rambled much longer than we're allowed to. We're supposed to, because uh, we're supposed to do like that first quick eight nine minute intro, and then we then we segue. But you know what? Like in church, when you feel in the spirit. You know, you just you just move. You, you really, let it. He really you let it go. The podcast you let to it go. The you let church? it go where okay. where the, where the spirit is leading you, and it led us to, to twenty to twenty six twenty six minutes of rambling. All right. So uh, get ready for this benediction. We will take a break, and then we will come back. I definitely this probably won't be another forty minute episode because we're already almost at thirty. So, but who knows? Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. All I know is I am not staying up to help edit. Well, we don't expect you to. But all right, we'll be back. All right. And we're back. We're back in this thing. Do you have stuff to talk about? Because I got stuff to talk about, but I don't know if I can talk about it. What do you mean you don't know if you can talk about it? Because of. Well, if you don't think you can talk about it, then why would you? Then you sounds like you already know. <clears throat> Well, I'm going to talk about it anyway. You can just cut me off. So, can we hit... Okay, first I want to specify, for those of you who are watching, yes, I am drinking a Heineken. It is alcohol-free. I don't want people... Because in the same breath earlier, I mentioned that I was also opening my Heineken. But there is zero alcohol. If you are in the Charlotte area and you would like to sample it, please shoot me a DM. I will be more than happy to offer you... And your workplace, your place of business, however many you need, let me know. I got you. Um, wanted to talk about your girl, America's girl. Well, black America's girl. Well, she was black America's girl. Um, Shikari. Is it Shikari or Shikari? Miss Richardson. Everyone. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, everyone went hard for her when she placed in the Olympics. Uh, and then, you know, the harsh disappointment when she failed her drug test. And everyone was just like, oh, it's just weed. I've never heard so much it's just weed in, in my entire life. But it was just weed. She wasn't able to participate in any of the Olympic Games in Tokyo. So, you know, I think everybody was just kind of ready for that comeback. Like, okay, she when she gets the chance, she's going to get in there. She's going to kill it. So there was a race that took place this weekend or in Oregon, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. I didn't realize they would have a race so close to the Olympics being over. Like, give these ladies, give people just a month to rest. But no, got into it. And, you know, Shikari got on the mic. And she, I mean, she was going hard for herself, hyping herself, as you should. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't know what they're, what's in Jamaican rum or sugar cane or water or just the soil, which is Jamaica. But the natural mystic that takes over those Jamaican runners. When I tell you, I told David, it looked like one of the runners ran to Jamaica and back and still won the race. It was amazing. The Jamaicans did phenomenally. But from there, unfortunately, Shikari placed last. They said it was ninth place, but... I recently heard someone say she placed last. And, you know, people... In that ninth place? I didn't know if there were 10 racers. I think that's... But, I mean... If, they're the same. Uh, so, my stance on it... And, again, this is just my opinionated truth. I haven't dropped that statement in a while. I, I don't think she should be canceled. Uh, I don't think by any means... She can run faster than, than I could ever wish why would she be canceled well people were saying oh you know how people are like she went so hard and she was hyping herself and all this stuff and then she essentially she lost um i think 
where I really want to go with this conversation is just the fine line between successful arrogance and or where does confidence and arrogance like where do you cross over from being self-confident to just being overly arrogant because you know you think of all these athletes so we, we've gone through society where athletes are confident in them I mean look at Muhammad Ali he he was one arrogant mother trucker like that man said like he had his mother own trucker. mother trucker yeah, had, it's getting explicit here had, on, had, on beep, had his own catchphrases i mean he insulted just about anybody he got in the ring with now i don't know his entire like the entirety of his his fights i'm sure he lost um and i'm sure even within a loss he still came back was like i'm Hey, I might have lost this one, but I'm I'm still the best. I'm still the greatest. Um, and I don't know. Again, wasn't I wasn't around during his prime, so I don't know how people responded to you know someone of such arrogance coming back and then losing and then having to you know either walk in it or walk that arrogance back. So I was kind of torn because I'm not a big fan of arrogance. I'm big on confidence. You know, believe in yourself. Blah blah blah. But I'm not a fan of. I'm the greatest, here I am, but because not saying that if you refer to yourself as the greatest when you don't succeed, you're no longer, I don't know how to say it, but I just. I just love your hair. It's just so you do? Fan- it's I just felt so, like you didn't like it. It's so fantastic. Um, I don't know. Don't I mind just, me, keep making your point. I can't because I have a man touching my hair. Uh, I just felt a type of way. I'm more stroking okay, than, than just, touching. Stroking. Okay, These okay. long strokes. That I'm giving you. <laughs> it's got really uncomfortable, really quick. Comfortable for what? We married. Um. Yeah, but twice. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't mind me. It's a Heineken. It's not alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, everyone went so hard for her. She killed it in the race, and I, I don't even know her time in this race, and I can't remember what her time was for the qualifier for the Olympics. But I guess I'm just kind of like. I get why people are. I get why people feel a type of way of her not winning because everyone went so hard for her, um, and we expected that her first race back she was going to be magnificent. Um, and then you know she she talked about how she's human and and we get it. Yeah, she's human. She can just run faster. But I'm still kind of torn in terms of that line between confidence and she's a confident athlete to and this doesn't just pertain to her this can pertain to all people who are just overly confident leaning into the territory of arrogance so i kind of just wanted to get your opinion on that i think she's magnificent i honestly i swear i didn't know who she was until like june 26th of this year never had reason to hear about her and then she placed and then she disqualified and it was like it's been like 37 days that she's been on my radar and you know i was disappointed i was like dang girl i thought you were really gonna bring it and and show why we went so hard for you but in the same respect yeah jess was like we watched the race on my phone after uh, we got back from the from the brunch festival and um <laughs> for the race jess was like i thought she was supposed to be fast <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I did because if you saw like you, the way you and everybody else. if you saw the way it started and then she was like everyone was going this way and she was going backwards, um, I was I was so, really perplexed. Yeah, but I, I'm not I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way. I, I, yeah. She's an amazing athlete. I think she right. would have represented America great. I don't know if she just didn't train as much as she had for Tokyo or what happened. I just think for me it was I I appreciate humility. And I appreciate I appreciate humility and confidence. I don't necessarily like arrogance. I think that's because arrogance is what embarrasses you when you're not successful. Not saying you should go in anticipating not being successful, but yeah. you should always have a level of humility, have a level of understanding that you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, you can talk that big talk, but when you can't run that big run, now 
people like the Jamaican girl did an interview and she was like, I didn't even see her. I don't know. I don't like, like it's above me now. I yeah, won. I mean, I I would feel the same thing. Like where I'm, I won and was just like a hair away from the all time world record. And you asking me about the person who came in last place. <laughs> like, what are we, what are we doing here? I would have, I, she acted with way more attack than I probably would have. I, I would have responded much differently than, than she, than she did. So, um, I think she, 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 she handled it very well while still, still throwing a little All bit. All the shade, of, like bit of shade. the sun which, was gone. It was just clouds, which, um, <clears throat> clouds and shade. It was cool. That's it. That's all your opinions. Uh, I mean, there, I mean, the, so there was a lot of, there, there was a lot of activity around this, this topic over the the course of the weekend. Uh, I was I was actually on the floor before uh, I I got up and, and had you watch the video with me. I was watching an interview for four I think of the uh, of the the contestants for the for the race, um, and they were just being it was like a panel interview. So there was one guy kind of throwing questions at each one of the racers, and um, <clears throat> you know, Shakari came off, I guess as you would say, uh, arrogant. Um, she was. Probably, I wouldn't say the head, maybe the headliner just because of, you know, her social media status and, and, you know, everything that surrounded her in terms of, of the Olympics. So, um, I remember the, <clears throat> the gentleman who was interviewing, he, he referenced her millions of followers, you know, on social media mm-hmm. and she corrected him. She was like, two million. Just <laughs> like, okay. He, he didn't even concern herself. It was like, oh, okay. You know I mean? But, you know, this be factual. Okay. It's two million. It's two million. I'm not one of them. Um, some would say millions would cover two million, but you know, hey, I, there's nothing wrong with specificity. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, and then uh, he he asked her about the women she was running against, and you know, she she gave credit. She said, you know, I, I recognize the talent that's up here, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm not starstruck. I was like, okay, you know, okay, I okay, I, I, no, no problem with it. And then you throw in. You know her her nails and her hair, uh, and you know she is a very um, she's a very dominant presence, mm-hmm. right? Um, her she's just uh, she's a, a personality. I would I would call her, and, that, and I don't think that that's good or bad. Um, but she did not perform at all. And when I say there are a lot of there's a lot of activity, especially on Twitter, it was like. It became the intersection of like multiple different corners of of Twitter. Like there was Black Twitter, there was uh, feminine Twitter, there was sports Twitter, <laughs> there was protect Black women at all costs Twitter, <laughs> there was Black men are trash Twitter. <laughs> it was like everybody was all in the, the same. Twitters. Everybody was in the same pot, and they were just going Twitters. at it. So what where, where I think a lot of what what gets lost on a lot of people is um, if you're not a part of sports Twitter. Which I, I I claim no, no, no no membership to any of these twitters. I just I, I observe from the outside looking in. But what happens a lot on sports Twitter is if uh, you are um, you 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 exude bravado, you know you're you are arrogant and you make guarantees or or whatever, and you know you get thrashed, you you stink it up, or you get you know you get dusted like in a race like Shakira did, you're gonna get dragged. It's just gonna happen. Mm-hmm. The memes are gonna fly. Mm-hmm. The gifts are gonna fly. They're gonna look, they're gonna bring up your old tweets, <laughs> freezing cold takes, like everything. And it's just, it's just, it's a part of sports culture. Honestly, um, when you don't perform and you are of a certain level, you're of a certain status, and you talk a certain level of trash, um, and you don't perform, you're gonna hear about it. Uh, and this is this happens all the time. Like LeBron has gotten it, um, you know. F- uh, football players get it. All other basketball players get it. It's just, you know, it just comes with the territory. Um, but where you have these other, um, these other, and this is speaking specifically to Twitter, uh, but when you have the, these these other uh, corners of Twitter kind of kind of clashing with sports Twitter, it, it it seems like oh, well they're just they're just dragging a black woman or oh. Um, you know, they, you know, y'all just love to see a black woman lose and oh, la da 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 da. And I don't think, I mean, maybe there, there, there probably are some people out there who, 
you know, want to see Shakari lose just because of who she is, because of her hair and her nails, and because she's not, um, she's not shy and she speaks her mind. There probably are some people who want to see her fail because of that. But I don't think that was the majority of what was going on. What you're seeing is just everyday occurrence and, you know, in, in, in reaction to a sports headline and a sports event, sporting event. So I, um, it was just amazing how it just kind of blew up. Like it was a race. It wasn't even the Olympics. No. Like you said, it was. I've never heard of this race. And, I, and I'm, I'm not a big track and field uh, consumer. So may, I just assume it was like some sort of exhibition. Um, not really like a qualifying race for anything. Just, yo, we got these people, you know, just let, run. let you carry run against, you know, these, these other, uh, you know, world-class, uh, sprint, uh, women sprinters. So, you know, I, I think that a lot of it was, excuse me, a lot of overreaction. Um, and, uh, but, but at the same time, I, I don't, I, I don't have a problem with her being the way that she is. Like she just is who she is. Um, and she, and she has performed, right? Like that's the reason we all know about it because she did come out and she did, she did run, um, Mm -hmm. you know, she did perform like better than, you know, she like, like she had top 10 performances like in the world, um, when, when she was qualifying. So, uh, let's not act like she doesn't have the talent and it's not there. So yeah, she should be, confident she should be who she is um i i have no issue with it and 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 i have no i i don't know that i agree with a lot of the the attacks on her um you know like the way that she speaks or you know how confident she was um and and all this and that like i don't know pe- people like i i, I if, if we're gonna do that we have to be consistent right like we have to do it when male athletes um, you know, behave that way. We have to do it when white male athletes behave that way. We have to do it when white uh, uh, female athletes perform that way. Not just when it's you know a black woman who's outspoken and has blue hair and and long fingernails. You know, I I feel like uh, there there were some unfair attacks on her as who she is um, that were a little unwarranted. Like she lost the race. Mm-hmm. She lost the race. Everybody and she didn't. Something. And she didn't handle the the the, the post race interview very well um but she just got waxed and she knew that she got waxed and it it seemed like bait from from the network to interview her the ninth place finisher instead of the first or second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth place finisher they they interviewed her and it was it was just like a, a powder keg right like it was just recipe for a disaster they didn't even let her catch her breath so she so she David, it was not she her sounded like she was rapping she sounded like it, Cardi. yeah it was not her finest moment but and what people didn't see again on twitter twitter like is is amazing for people who aren't really on there you get information that mainstream the mainstream media uh doesn't show you but there was an interview where it was i think it was off camera footage not off camera but it was basically not like the main uh, um, broadcast interview that you would see where she apologized for, for her language and, you know, that she was a little emotional and, or not emotional, but she was, you know, she was disappointed in herself um, and after the race and, and gave, you know, gave props and, and proper respect to, to everybody who won. She said she loves women, period, black, white, whatever. She wants to see women succeed. Um, it would have been great if that could have been her reaction immediately, but at the same time, as someone who's, you know, been an athlete and been in competitive environments, Right after you lose is not the best time <laughs> to be interviewed. Not everybody handles that well. So ultimately, I think it's much do about nothing. Uh, this probably won't even be, you know, news by the time this episode airs. But, um, you know, I, I thought that there were some unfair uh, assessments of her for being made and some unfair attacks on her character. But at the same time, uh, the stuff on Twitter, the gifts and the memes, I, I enjoyed it. I, I retweeted a lot of it. Because the stuff is when you get good content, you just you got to appreciate good content. Uh, but that's par for the course. So it's, um, you know, it, it was a lot going on. But, you know, I think it's it's a non story here. And, you know, like another week. Cool. I just wanted to address that. I, I, I guess I'll still root for her. Um, of course, she's an American. Yeah. But the, the way them Jamaicans, I'm like, I don't know what what breed of goat y'all have for your curry. But. 
I mean, but you know, Jamaica, you know, I mean, I'm your resident Ghanaian, so I'm always going to find Jamaica and Ghana have like a coalition of connections. So I, I personally feel more connected <laughs> to Jamaica than I do. A lot of their pigeon English has, has, I don't care about pigeons. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. I'm talking okay, about no pigeons. Pigeon English just has nothing to do with birds. I don't want a lot no of, pigeons. A lot of Jamaican pigeon is a girl that Jama- can't get no love. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the pigeon English in, in in or just the overall pigeon language in Jamaica incorporates some Akan words, and they have the same meaning. So just through you know the unpermissioned relocation and exploitation of blacks from the continent of Africa to other locations, they were able to keep part of the language. There's actually a story of a great Ashanti woman who was enslaved in Jamaica and she led a revolt, a successful revolt. And there were slaves that enslaved people who had gotten their freedom and lived in the mountains and could not get, like, no matter how hard they tried to get them back, they couldn't do it. Rita Marley, the wife of the late Bob Marley, she lives in Ghana. I'm just So, you know, Shikari, I feel for you, sis. But I think my roots closer to Jamaica. And, you know, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, on my maternal side, is from the West Indies. We have yet to confirm what island, but he is from the West Indies. Thought about doing an ancestry DNA to find out, but then my cousin and I concluded that if we did it, it would just trace us right back to Africa. So it'd probably be a waste of $99. So anyway, I'm, and I like curry goat, like properly made curry goat. You ain't had, it's, it's nothing like it. So, you know, Shakari, when you win, I'm gonna root for. I'm gonna be like, yeah, go girl. <laughs> but the way them Jamaicans flew from Oregon to Jamaica and then back to the finish line. <clears throat> anyway, part of why we record late at night is because uh, we have kids, and one of our kids sleeps very well. Mm-hmm. The other one, you have no idea if she's gonna sleep through the night from one night to the next. So she's actually awake. And she's screaming. And she is <laughs> screaming her life away. So we're going to end here um, a little bit abruptly. But I really only want to talk about Shakari anyway. So this is kind of like a blessing in disguise considering I have to edit this. So we're still going to come in under an I hour. I wanted to talk which, about OnlyFans. Which, which is amazing. We'll, we'll hit OnlyFans next week. So, um, yeah, episode 40, Rush Vibes. Connect with us on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we have some guests coming up. I know I've been saying that for like the last six episodes. I promise they're coming. Um, I can't wait for you guys to meet them. They're awesome people. They're amazing people who have had huge impacts on our lives. Um, and I'm sure they'll impact you guys a little bit too. You'll take some nuggets away. So stay tuned. Episodes every Wednesday. Sometime in the morning, hopefully. <laughs> We're going to get out of here and put this baby to bed. But y'all be good. Catch you next week. Peace. Let me down